uh, whether or not they are, whether or not they are in elementary, junior, high, high school, uh, universities. We pray that God will just bless them uh, tremendously. Uh, Elder, would you pray for us? Let us pray. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Let us let us pray. Uh, Father, we're thankful that you have seen it fit for us to be alive and well on this uh, wonderful Tuesday. We are thankful for the for your watch care over the hours while we slept. And so now as we begin this day, or for some as they continue this day, we thank you for being with us, and we ask that you will guide, lead, and protect us throughout this day. Today, on this Tuesday, we want to remember our children. We ask in a special way that you will continue to bless them and and meet their every need. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will, your whole, through your Holy Spirit, you will turn their hearts toward you. Those who have loosened their grip on you, we pray, Heavenly Father, that your spirit would woo and draw them back. And those who are in you, we pray that you will continue to give them the strength they need. We pray that you'll beat back at every temptation that they'll face today and for the rest of this week and even the rest of their lives. We pray that you will give them the the impetus to come to come out like fine gold that have that have been tried in in the fire we pray that you will meet their health needs their um we pray that you'll provide for them be with them as they go to school today and those who are already out of school and employed we pray that today will be a good day for them we want our children to be saved when you come. So do whatever is necessary to make this happen. We want to pray in a special way that you will that you will bless the speaker today. Hide the, the individual behind your cross and may they speak words of life. May they speak with power. Uh, may, may, may this morning's message be one of encouragement um, and a means of bringing us closer to you in our walk with you. Continue to bless our pastor and bless everyone on this line today. And do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elder, for uh, leading us in prayer family this morning as God has spread and prepared the table. Uh, if you help me, welcome to Morning Manor this morning. Uh, the man of God with us, uh, Pastor Joanne. Uh, Sanders is with us. He is uh, a native of the Baltimore, Maryland area. He is a graduate of Oakwood and Andrews. Uh, he served while he was at Andrews as administrative pastor of the New Life uh, Church there on the campus of Andrews University. But now he currently serves as the assistant pastor of the great Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so we are privileged to have uh, with us this morning to share with us what God has laid upon his heart. Uh, the man of God, Pastor Joan uh, Sanders is with us. Bishop, we welcome you. We are glad that you're here. And uh, we thank God for you this morning. We turn the time over to you uh, to, to share with us what God has laid on your heart. Welcome again to the morning, man. I want to say good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you are doing well uh, so far this week. Uh, very grateful uh, to be able to uh, be with you all this morning. Pastor, uh, I do honor you. Uh, in church, uh, I honor you as well. Uh, I was just looking at the numbers go up and up and up, um, especially since I know that, you know, uh, you're in Central Time. Uh, so just to uh, just to see that uh, so many individuals are getting up 530, 6 o'clock, um, your time is is like, wow, uh, I, I, I do appreciate it. I love it. Um, and also want to just say uh, thank you uh, to Nashoni, uh, Pastor Nashoni, for um, uh, for the invitation. Uh, she's the one uh, who really asked me to be here. Uh, so I do want to just say, uh, church, uh, that I'm really grateful. Uh, and uh, before we uh, get into things, I uh, just want to turn your attention to scripture. Um, I know that we are indeed entering into a uh, new season. Uh, fall is upon us, everyone. Fall is upon us. Uh, and so as we are entering into the fall season, I, 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 I've I, been processing through a couple of things. Uh, so 
I want to turn your attention to the book of Joshua, sixth book of the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. Uh, we're going to read scripture a little bit, then we're going to pray, and then we're going to have a, a, a rather brief devotion, uh, and then we're going to get out of here. All right. Uh, so uh, the, the book of Joshua is where we're going to be uh, landing today. Uh, and I'll be reading just a little bit, uh, reading just a little bit. Uh, Joshua chapter chapter one. Joshua chapter one is where we're going to be uh, starting today. Um, and I'll be reading just a couple of verses. I hope that's all right with you all. Uh, so this is what it says. I'll be reading in your hearing. I know that everyone's probably getting ready for work. Um, but Joshua chapter one, it says this, reading from the New Living Translation, it says, after the death of Moses, the, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses's assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. And says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. And so he says this in verse six, he says, be strong and courageous for you are the one who would lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you and do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. To study this book of instruction continually and meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. It says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray, everyone. Let's pray. Father, we say thank you so much because, God, we know that you're with us. And, Lord, we know that when you are with us, God, we can be strong and courageous. So, Father, I'm asking that you will allow us to walk away knowing that with you on our side, we have nothing to worry about. God, with you on our side, yes, troubles may come. But, Lord, with you there, we can indeed be strong and courageous. So, God, we say thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. So everyone, um, as I just said, you know, fall season is upon us. Fall season is upon us. And and I know uh, you you all live in Texas. Uh, many of you are in Texas. Uh, a number of you may be in the Arizona area. Uh, but one of the things that excites me about, about uh, fall season is that football is back in action. Uh, I am a I am a massive NFL fan. And since I am uh, from Baltimore, I live in Baltimore, I can't help but be a Baltimore Ravens fan, all right? I know that in, in, in Texas, uh, you probably got a number of, you probably got a number of uh, Dallas Cowboys fans. And listen, this this might be y'all year. This might be the year that, that the Cowboys can go all the way. But the reason why I bring this up uh, is because just like, you know, you have a new NFL season that comes up each fall. Uh, you tend to have uh, new expectations for this new season each fall. Uh, every year, there's an opportunity for a team to possibly go all the way. And so what ends up happening is you have a number of preseason games to knock the rust off a little bit. And I think that uh, what a lot of people look forward to is that first game of the season so that they can really see what chances do my team really have? What chances do my team really have of 
uh, taking it far, of going far and possibly winning the championship that can that can immortalize my team, immortalize my, my city into history. Uh, I, I believe that many people uh, have those high expectations when they are beginning a new season. Uh, and listen, I, I say this because I know that many individuals are going back to school. It's, it, it's, a, it's a new season coming. Fall is coming. Uh, it's going to be a little bit colder outside. And so typically it's around this time where individuals really begin to put things in, per in perspective, possibly get a little bit more reflective and then think, man, okay, God, this is how my summer went. I, I believe that I was successful here. I, I I could grow here. And God, I believe that if, if, if this fall season, if this new season is going to be something that's better, I believe that like I may have to do this here. I may have to do that there. And see, what ends up happening, we don't even notice it at times, is we begin to uh, uh, we begin to create expectations for ourselves for new seasons. Without even noticing it, we say, well, if I did this here, chances are that I'm going to do this there. That if I was successful in, in the summertime here, then Lord, I, I'm expecting to be successful and possibly grow there. And, and so I believe that it's important for us to talk about expectations. Uh, because expectations are are things that each and every single one of us has. As people, we have expectations. It's part of being human. Uh, it's part of the things that help us to feel safe. We we expect that and when the morning comes, the sun will rise. That when we're going to work, we expect there to possibly be traffic at certain points in times of the day. Uh, we expect that around noontime, we're going to be heading to lunch. And we expect that when we get off from work, there's going to be rush hour traffic. See, the, there are expectations that we look to to help us have a sense of normalcy uh, in our day. See, but I, I say all this because uh, while expectations are normal, while expectations are, are, are common for each and every single person, uh, expectations uh, can also get us in trouble. Uh, because if you if you understand how expectations work, uh, you must understand that at times, listen to me, at times, uh, expectation can be detrimental to your process. That that at times expectations can be the things that set you up for failure. Uh, because here's the thing, like I said before, each of us has expectations, whether they're conscious expectations or they're unconscious expectations, we have expectations. When we get married, we, we understand, hey, I expect my husband or my wife to do such and such. Like when we have kids, we probably say, well, I expect this to happen or I expect that to happen. But how many of you have ever gotten married and 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 you expected your 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 significant other your spouse uh to begin cleaning cleaning up the kitchen after themselves or taking out the garbage after themselves and after a year or two goes by you see that they're still not doing these things and what you expected to happen did not happen and how many of you how many of you know that when those things did not happen while you wanted to keep a smile on your face and the back of your mind you couldn't help but think if this person does not clean up the dishes after themselves if this person does not do their laundry when their support like you we, we we create expectations and see what i've learned is that when our expectations aren't met here it is you need to understand this at times when our expectations are not met what it can often lead to is resentment it can lead to resentment have any of you ever been in a situation where you expected something to happen, but what ends up happening is not what you expected, that your reality does not align with uh, what the possibility could have been? And because your reality didn't align with the expectation that that led to some disappointment and that disappointment caused some resentment. And you're wondering why you're so frustrated uh, on the job. You're wondering why you're so frustrated in your relationships. And it's because you are experiencing disappointment. Now, now I, I say all of this because yeah, just like us, the Israelites were in a period of transition. Uh, 
The Israelites were in a period where uh, they were going to be starting something new. Uh, they were going from Moses, the most beloved, I mean, the most beloved prophet and leader of the Israelite people. 40 years, the Bible tells us that he was leading the Israelites. 40 years. We're talking about the man who God used to free the Israelites from Egyptian bondage. We're talking about a man who helped the Israelites leave a space that they were in for 400 years, all right? They were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. And so if you can imagine that there, there is a heart that the people had for Moses, there was a loyalty that the people had for Moses. And so if you can imagine being Joshua, I want you to put yourself in Joshua's shoes, everyone. I want you to imagine that you are now the person that God is saying, hey, I want you to now lead this church of over 600,000 people, this church uh, that that once was underneath another person, a beloved leader, like a beloved individual who will always be in the hearts of the people, like there will be books written about him. Matter of fact, he already has had four books uh, written by him at this point. And now you're saying, listen, it's your turn, man. Can you imagine, I want you to imagine the pressure, the pressure that you have to be facing, uh, the pressure that you have to be going through in your mind as you are now taking over a, a, a group of people, 600,000 people who are hoping, who are expecting God to be able to finally give them the promised land that he said to Abraham thousands of years ago, listen, I am promising your ancestors, I am promising your descendants, I will give them land and they will be able to have descendants. They'll be able to have a massive amount of people. Now, listen, listen, y'all, God already blessed them with a lot of people. Because if you didn't know, Exodus, I mean, uh, Genesis tells us that when the Israelites first went to Egypt, there were only 70 people. However, what we find is that after 400 years of being enslaved, God blessed them so that they didn't just grow, but they experienced massive growth. And so can I tell you that even in your difficult times, that even in your times of trial and tribulation, that even when you are pressed, that God can still expand you. But that's a message for another day. See, see, the message that we're focusing on is the fact that even after God blessed them, even after God kept them, not even just 400 years in slavery, once God allowed them to leave slavery, experience freedom. And here's the story. If you don't know numbers, we find that the Israelites rebel against God because in numbers, God is telling Moses, God is telling Aaron, the leaders at the time, he's saying, listen, I have a land that I want to give you. Listen, I made a promise to your ancestor, Abraham, that I would give you all land. And listen, this is the land that I have for you. But I, what I want you to do is I want you to spy on the land. So send a representative from each tribe, the different tribes of Israel, send a representative from each tribe. And what I want you to do is to go into the land, spy on the land, because listen, we need to come up with a plan because listen, I will be with you. I will be with you. Know that I will be with you, but I need you to see the land. I want you to get an idea of the land that you're going to be walking into. So that when you actually walk into it, like the battle is already yours. I just want you to be able to walk into that thing so that you can begin to imagine what your life is going to be like there. And so what ends up happening is rather than them walking into the land and seeing, oh, man, like God has given us this. They come back with a bad report saying, listen, y'all, like God expects us to go against these giants. God expects us to, to go into this land and think we can win. And what ends up happening, here's a quick spoiler alert, all right? What ends up happening is that the people of God rebel against God. And so what ends up happening is that in the book of Deuteronomy, we find that uh, 40 years have gone by because God said, for every day that you were spying in this land, uh, you will be in the wilderness for a year. They were in the land for 40 days. And so God said, you got to be in the wilderness for 40 years, because how many of you know that there are just certain people that cannot be involved for certain things that God wants to do in your life? 
See, see, the reality is, is that the work that God wanted to accomplish in the Israelites, uh, he needed a certain quality of faith to be there. And see, unfortunately, there was a generation of people who did not have the faith, the quality of faith that was necessary to accomplish the work of getting this land. And so the reality is, is that what we can learn from this, what we can learn from the book of Deuteronomy is that sometimes we need to make sure that our faith is in a space for us to actually accomplish what God wants to do in our in the new season. And so what we find, what we find is that now 40 years have gone by, a generation has died out, and now there are new individuals new individuals who are being prepared, new individuals who are, who are making preparation to now be the army of God that will push forward the, the, the will of God, if you, if you will, all right? And what we find is that this, this, this new generation of, indi of individuals, this new generation of believers are now experiencing the loss of a leader. And so what ends up happening is that Joshua is coming in on all of this. And what ends up happening is this. In Joshua chapter 1, God says, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And can I tell you that God is telling you in your situations and your different circumstances that are happening in your life, that God is saying, be strong and courageous. Listen, I'm not sure what each and every single one of you are going through. Someone you might be dealing with financial pressure. And the last season, you you experienced some things like the Israelites experienced some things. And you're just like, well, God, I don't know how we're going to get through in this new season. But God is saying, be strong and courageous. Listen, there might be another person who might be dealing with some family struggles. You might be wanting your children to have a relationship with God. And as you're seeing from history, you're seeing that they're walking and walking and walking away. It seems like they're kind of sort of like the Israelites who have rebelled against God. And you're like, Lord, I, I want to believe that you can perform a miracle for my family. I want to believe that you can save my children. But God, I, I, I don't know. And God is saying, be strong and courageous. There might be someone out there who, who is saying, Lord, uh, I feel like I'm the only person who's actually trying in my marriage. I, I, I feel like the other person is checked out. I feel like the love is gone. And listen, I want to tell you that God is saying, be strong and courageous. But some of you might be asking yourselves, well, pastor, how can I be strong and courageous when it seems like everything on all sides is, is, is against me? Um, how can I be strong when, just like the Israelites, we, I, we've lost our leader who have helped us this long? How, how, how can how can I really be strong and courageous? Well, well, I believe the answer is in the text. I believe that God gives us some clues. Well, in the text, because from verse six to verse nine, God gives reasons as to why we should uh, be strong and courageous. All right. Well, it says this in verse six: Be strong and courageous, for you're the one who will. Lead the people to possess the land, all the land that I swore to your ancestors. All right. And then verse seven, it says this. Once again, it repeats, be strong, and courageous. And here is here it is. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. See, 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 here, here's one of the things that I've recognized about us at times. See. I recognize that the reason why our expectations don't always align with our reality at times, because um, we don't always have the right methodology for how we how we act. Um, I, I recognize that at times that many of us, we have high hopes and dreams that we have like these visions for our lives and what they should be like. However, I recognize that we don't always have the, the plans to help get us there. And I've learned that because we don't always have the right plans to get us there, that that it often causes us to be in spaces that we didn't hope to be in. See, see, I recognize that because many of us don't have a book to, to look to, that many of us are possibly trying to lose weight. Some of us are possibly trying to get a better, uh, healthy lifestyle. And because we don't have a guide, because we don't have a book to look to, uh, we're, we're saying, well, I'm working out. I feel like I'm changing my diet, but, but the pounds aren't shedding. 
what's going on, God? I, I'm trying my best, but it seems like I'm I, each time I take two steps forward, uh, I, I take three steps back. Can I let you know that a lot of times, if you don't have the proper accountability in place, that if you don't have the proper information, if you don't have the proper like data to help you along the way, you'll be thinking that you're doing the right thing when you're actually doing the wrong thing. See, there are some of us who have created rules, who have created beliefs around how certain things are supposed to work in our lives. And the reality is, is that you just have not been following the book. See, see, for Joshua, God said, you need to follow the instructions that are in the manual that, that Moses has given you. But for some of you, you're trying to figure out, well, God, how can I take my relationship with you to the next level? And God is saying, I need you to be looking in my Bible. I need you to be looking in the book. Like there are several individuals who have come before you who have been successful in building this relationship with me, but you got to be looking at the book. See, some of us, we're looking at the wrong things. We're getting our information on how to be, how to become more financially savvy from TV shows. When TV shows aren't necessarily showing us the proper information for how we can indeed be blessed in this new season. So can I tell you that just as God was saying, Joshua, I need you to look into the book. Can I tell you that there is a book that God wants each and every single one of us to be looking into? That if you're trying to grow spiritually, you need to look into the Bible. That, it, that if you're trying to grow spiritually, man, you don't even just need the Bible. The Bible needs to be your foundation. But there are individuals who have written literature on this topic of how you grow spiritually. There are manuals that you can turn to. If you're trying to become a healthier individual, man, YouTube is a great tool. There are several influencers, several mentors, guides out there that can teach you how to be successful in this new season. You just need to look in the book. See, you can't try, you can't lose, you can't lose weight if, if you're not in a caloric deficit. See, you can't save money if you don't create a budget. You can't improve your marriage if you don't have guidance on how your communication skills uh, are actually hurting your marriage. You need guidance and you can get guidance from guides. You can get guidance from the book. And see, here's the thing. Some of you are saying to yourselves, man, I feel like there's no one out there for me to get help from. Can I tell you that many of us are lucky because Joshua is going to be leading without Moses in his life because Moses is passing on. But you see, many of us, we still have individuals around us who are experts in certain areas. See, some of you out there may be saying, Lord, I think I need, I, I, I want to grow my prayer life, but I don't know how. Can I tell you that you have individuals on this call right now who are, who are experts at creating a disciplined prayer life? All you have to do is ask. There are some of you out there who are saying, man, Lord, I want to read your Bible more, but I just don't understand it. Can I tell you that you are surrounded by some individuals who have such a profound understanding of the word of God, and they are just waiting for someone to ask. They're just waiting. They have, they have, they have guides, they have information. They just want to bless you. And so the first thing I want to, I want you to leave with is this. If you want to, if you want to make sure that uh, you are successful in this new season, if, if you want to make sure that you remain strong and courageous in the Lord in this new season, what you need to be able to do is look at the book that God is giving you. And there is a different book for each situation. I don't want you to get caught up and think that there's only one book. No, each, each situation, each aspect of life calls for a different book. It calls for a different mentor. One mentor can't help you in all areas. You might need a financial mentor. You might need a physical mentor. You might be, need a relational mentor, a spiritual mentor. God is look. God wants to give you a spiritual mentor so that you can have the proper book to set you up for success. And that's one reason why you could be strong and courageous in the Lord. But see, here's the other reason, and 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 it might come off as uh uh, uh as cliche for some of you, but it's something that's good for us to always remember. All right, because it says this, it says this, if we go back up, it says in verse five, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. 
I will not fail you or abandon you. See, many of us at times, we forget that God is with us and that and that the best thing that we could ever have in our lives is God with us. And see, the issue is, is that because Satan will try to distract us, because Satan will try to throw us off track, he will cause us to think that we have to do things in our own power that we have to save our marriages and our own power, that we have to save our kids and our own power. And see, here's the reason why this is dangerous. Because as humans, what we naturally do is we tend to overcompensate in situations. We don't know how to always handle stress. We don't know how to always handle the conflicts that happen and that come up in our lives. And so as a result, what we tend to do as sinners is go into self-preservation mode. And when we go into self-preservation mode, it causes us to overcompensate oh, okay. because all we're trying to do when we're preserving self oh, okay. is protect ourselves from hurt, harm, and danger. But when we do this, and see, this is the danger of overcompensation, we become so focused on a few areas that we neglect the other areas. And see, we become so focused on saving our marriage that, that we tend to press and say, hey, I think we should do this. I think we should do that. I think we should do this. While we're ignoring some other key areas that might be hurting us more than helping us. And, and see, this is what sin does. It causes us to take matters into our own hands and what ends up happening is because it's sin, because it's not good for us in, uh, innately, while certain things might work in the immediate time, for the long term, certain things will have more disadvantages than advantages. And so some of you might be saying, well, I feel like this is working now, but I still feel like there are certain things that are off. And see, can I tell you that the reason why certain things are working now is because overcompensation, it can work now. It can work. It will work now. But can I tell you that for the long term, you're going to accumulate a number of bruises. You're going to accumulate a number of bruises and hickeys and, and, and hits that are going to make it so that you wish that you would not have done it in the first place. It's because you can always, you can always bulldoze your way into figuring out a situation. However, how many of you know that when you bulldoze your way into figuring out a situation to getting to the finish line, you've run over so many people, you've run over so many things. And by the time you've gotten to the finish line, when you look back, you see that there is a wake of, 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 uh, of, of tragedy, of catastrophe that's in your face. And you're like, wow, I did not even know that I got here. It's because you relied on self. But God is saying, listen, if you stick with me, Proverbs, if you, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, right? And understand this, here's the promise. If you acknowledge the Lord, he will direct your, come on guys. God wants to direct your path. God wants to bring us success. God doesn't want us to be overcome by sin. Things are set up for us to succeed. Yet Satan, right? Here it is. Satan will try to use distractions that come up in your life. Satan will try to use the, 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 the issues that come up in your life to distract you from the fact that you have the greatest advantage, that God is on your side. Can we just celebrate the fact that God is on our side, that God has never left us, that God has never forsaken us, that God will never leave us and God will never forsake us? And listen, God says, look, God says this, as long as you obey the book, as long as you obey my, 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 my directions, my commandments, God says, I will bring you success. And now here's the last thing. Success won't always feel like success, right? Cause, cause some of you, some of you, you're, you're, you're thinking, you're thinking prosperity message. Like, yeah, if I follow God, 
he going he going to give me a million dollars my marriage going to be on fire like my like my family my kids my friends we all going to go up and see here's the thing here's the tough thing about life right that that those things cannot be guaranteed like let me just say that now let me just say, like those things are are not guaranteed success does not always look like what success looks like to america in the spiritual realm Success looks like being faithful to God. Success looks like being in right standing with God. And, and, and so for the for the believer, God is saying, I, I, I will bring you, I will, I, I will like give you land. And see, for some of us, land could simply be just giving an example. In the past, in the past, while someone was always talking against you. And you responded in a way that was harmful. Like your response said, oh, you talking to me? Like, how dare, like being successful in this land, trusting in the Lord means that you're saying, hey, I don't know what the issue is today. God bless you. I'm gonna be praying. That's what success can look like for you in a situation. That's what success looks like. Success doesn't always look like getting the car because I know we want it. Success doesn't always look like getting a high paying job because we want it. Success doesn't always look like like having your marriage restored, even though we want that. Sometimes success can look like your character being refined underneath the fire. But but the Bible says, the Bible says it shows us, it shows us that if we're faithful, that God will bless us. And can I just give you a spoiler alert? If you never read, if you never read the book of Joshua, here's the thing. Joshua led the Israelites to defeat over 30 kingdoms. By the time you get to Joshua chapter 15, we see that the, the Israelites, this new generation, because they were faithful to God, they defeated over 30 kings. And the rest of the book is just about God showing them, like, listen, like they were able to pick the land that they were able to walk, that they wanted to live in. Like you had some people saying, hey, I think I want to live over here. Hey, I want to live... And so God will bless you. God blessed Joshua. Not only was he a leader, he was a successful leader. Then he was. And it's because he was strong, courageous. And so my appeal to you folks, I want you to be strong and courageous. And see, you can be strong and courageous in this next season, this fall season, whatever the season is for you. If, we, if you won, follow the book. Follow the rules, the guidelines of the book. And two, you'll be able to be strong and courageous, right? Not falling off the wagon. If you simply remember that God is with you, that God is for you, and that he won't leave you. He won't forsake you. So know that that is the truth. That, listen, even if you mess up, even if you mess up, right? Because we are bound to mess up because we're sinners. Very last thing. I just want to share this. Messing up does not mean that God will forsake you. Because the difference between a righteous person and an unrighteous person is the fact that the unrighteous person doesn't get back up. God never said that the righteous person did not make mistakes. God never said that the righteous person did not have issues. The only difference is that the the righteous person, after making a mistake, they chose to get back up again. And so understand that even in the situations that you will be facing in your life in this upcoming season, God will be with you, even throughout the mistakes. And I guarantee you, because the text said it, if you believe that, man, the land that God will allow you to walk on in this new season will be crazy. So I just want to pray over you that you will receive this message, that you will receive that God wants you to be strong and courageous, that if you follow that book, if you follow whatever guideline God wants to give you for this new season, that he'll, he'll grant you success. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God in heaven, God, we say thank you so much for giving us an example in the life of your servant, Joshua. God, it's not easy to tell a person to be strong and courageous, but Lord, we know that if you are the one giving the command, you're giving it for good reason. And so, Heavenly Father, God, I'm asking that you be with each of us who are on this line, 
God, even that you be with the individuals who have uh, who have acknowledged and submitted their prayer requests unto you, God, they're looking for you to perform a miracle. And so, Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking that as we're entering into this new season, fall is upon us, God. I'm asking that you will indeed be a God who not just hears, but God, you truly intervene and you interact with us, that you will shift some things for us, that you will shift some mindsets, shift some behaviors, shift some beliefs, so that we can indeed get different results. So, Father God, I'm asking, I'm praying that for some of us, you help us to find the book that we need, find the right guidance that we need so that we can be successful. Help us to find the right mentors that we will need to help give us guidance in this new season. And Father, I'm asking that you will help us to be careful, to be mindful that you're always with us. And God, even if there are some individuals right now who are doubting that you are with them in their situation, God, I'm asking that you allow them to take, allow them to take a step back and see just how deeply you are in their situation with them. But most of all, Lord, I'm asking that you will help us all to be like Joshua, that we not only will hear you say be strong and courageous, but God, that we will actually be strong and courageous. So Father, we say thank you so much for hearing. And we say thank you so much for answering this prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you for that amen. word. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. It is a new season. Thank you, man of God. It's a new amen. season. We are in a shift. God is about to do something new. Uh, God defined success is on the way uh, for you. What a blessing. What a blessing this morning. We thank you, man of God, for the word this morning. Uh, we pray that in this new season of your life and ministry, that indeed God will do something uh, beyond what can be imagined. Uh, we thank you for the word this morning. Saints of God, because it's a new season. Uh, it's a new season for you, but we want in this new season for you to go ahead and invite a friend, invite someone uh, to join us in this new season as we come towards the close of the year. We want to finish strong. Uh, we want to finish strong. So we pray God's blessing upon you. Go ahead and invite somebody. Share the link. Uh, go over to the YouTube channel to receive that message again and even share the link uh, for the word that can be ble a blessing to somebody. Uh, let us pray together as we close. Remember, we are praying for our children today. We are lifting them up. We'll end the day at 7 central time and we'll pray again for a few minutes uh, for our children. Let's pray together. Loving Father, uh, that was a word we needed, Father. The summer is ended. Uh, Father, fall is upon us, but not only in the natural, Father. We know, God, there is a new season, fresh anointing. Uh, God is doing something new, Father. There is a shift, and we thank you, Lord, for the reminder from the servant of God today. Uh, we pray, God, that you take him and shape him and mold him and bless him, God, and prepare him for what you have called him to do. May your hands always be upon him, Father. May you be his guide, his savior, his friend. But sure enough, we pray, God, that you'll be the Lord of his life. Father, in this new season, we pray, God, that you extend uh, the borders of this ministry, Father, that will reach men and women across this globe, Father, with an encouragement to start the day or to even in the middle of the day uh, to know there's a reason to continue. So bless us again, we pray, Father. We look forward to coming together again. May you have your own way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful day today. Be safe. You are in a shift. You're in a new season. God is doing something brand new in your life. May you receive what God is giving. Uh, blessings to everybody today. Amen.